Uh, I'm Bill Mockaby. I'm Deborah, the mother. <laughs> I am Jeremy Mockaby, the youngest and smartest and most intelligent out of the Mockabees. <laughs> I am Bill Mockaby, the uh, better looking of the group and um, the wisest. He mm. may be smart, or at least what he thinks. I don't know of any of the three of you, any of the three of you that had the same characteristics. I mean, it was it was uh, you always told the truth. I mean, that was one of the things we tried to you know to say to hey, if you tell us truth, you won't get in trouble. That was only partially true. Now, <laughs> there may still be some things we still don't <laughs> yeah. know about. Matt would rather climb on a tile building and lie than to stand on the ground to tell the truth. And Billy Graham over there never did anything to lie about. So it, can you say that again? They didn't hear it. They yeah. didn't pick that <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, I, I heard. They yeah. they heard it. So Matthew, I think you were all three were different in in how you were raised and how you turned. Matthew out. would take credit for things he didn't do. Well, imagine that. And that's interesting too because where we are now living that out you hear people say you can raise your kids the same exact way but until you have them realize you raise them the same exact way and all three are completely Change. different and we yeah. have three children uh, we have two girls and a, and a young boy and uh, we've raised them all the same did everything the same and they couldn't be complete opposites yeah. uh, of of one another and, and uh, but we've implemented the rule of the uh, tell the truth and you don't get in trouble and that's been hard to swallow a couple yeah, times where yeah, yeah. you have to follow through with that. But that's something that we've implemented is, is that trust factor between us and all three of our kids is tell the truth and don't get in trouble. So everything is an open book, even the even the grimy side of it. So. Do you guys think you parented us the same? Oh, no. Yeah. I, I, no, I think I, no. That Every, different. everything was different with each of you because of your of who you were and your personalities really dictated that. I think our values were the same, though. Yeah, I, I think there there were certain there were certain non-negotiables. We did parent you different, but I think our values were the same. I, I just remember uh, telling the truth. You don't wear a hat on the inside of the house. Uh, that's and a terrible rule. That's a terrible yeah. rule. And we unless said it's at an dinner, Alabama hat. Yeah, we said at dinner until everybody was finished. The last person was finished with no TV. The, I think there were value things like that. I think. Yeah, that's the same. what I meant. The values stay the same. Yeah. Certainly, how you approach each kid is is a little bit different, but the values certainly don't change any of that. I think learnt watching you guys parent me and and math, especially Matthew. Um, I mean, we we picked up all kinds of things of, of how we've parented the, our three. I think we've implemented, certainly, I mean, if you see it modeled right, and you guys certainly modeled that right, that's what, that you want to give that to your kids. So certainly those values that you guys instilled at us certainly is something that we and, and both Christine and I uh, give to ours. Again, the, the the rule of don't tell the truth. I mean, something as simple as that. The is rule of don't we, tell the truth? Or the rule of, <laughs> if you don't lie, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah do not, not tell, tell the me truth. the truth. But we've implemented in that with our kids and the consistency. I remember how consistent you guys were, even in the middle of that chaos mm -hmm. uh, sometimes that it was with trying to manage Matt and officership and everything else is consistency. And that's one thing that we try to do is try to remain as consistent as possible, even in the craziness of life and the craziness of officership mm -hmm. and whatever that looks like is true, is that the house is a safe, constant, consistent place for our kids to be, to be raised. I think Deborah did that. I think Deborah provided that safe place. That well, you were never home. home. Oh, yeah, he was <laughs> never home. home. We didn't even know he was our dad. Until. <laughs> yeah. By the way, speaking of that, when did they tell you you were adopted? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't yet. Tell we, <laughs> we would do that on the podcast. How did you, how did you process that, <laughs> yeah, that news okay. being adopted? Yeah. I tell we, you, the fun thing for, for me is to, I mean, I know the values that we wanted to, <clears throat> to instill in you guys, but the tradition part side of mm -hmm. what we did as a family and to build those. And it's fun now to see what some of the things you do that carried over, mm -hmm. um, you know, like barbecues mm -hmm. and Christmas things. Cops. So that's fun for us. Cops. Cops. Watching cops. Why are you sweating? Yeah. They right. and <laughs> so anyway, cops. that's the fun part of it all. I think mom and our, I think for us, mom is the one that had the model family where she came from with her with uh, her parents I did that. they yeah. were her parents were great models about family and how family works and all of those kind of things uh, my background came from not such a, 
uh, background. My dad died when I was young, and uh, mama, <laughs> mama did not always set the best model for parenting. So I had to learn that as you go. I had to learn that from mom. So I think if you if you if there was a success meter for the Maccabee family, uh, I, and there probably is. I don't know what it is, but I think any success that we had as a family. Uh, was all based mm. on mom, who was kind of the rock through that whole thing. I, I I just think I think that was a deal. I never did drugs when I was a kid. You were coming to that <laughs> line that you guys have heard before. I never did drugs because I always heard, and I was around them in the '60s, and it was all around me. I heard if you did drugs, it would mess up your children. And the only thing <laughs> I wanted to be was a good dad because of my experience. So uh, you know. That was important to me uh, to learn as I go. And I'll go ahead and say that you guys got crazy stone cold sober. I mean, you didn't have any <laughs> drugs on my part. I don't know what happened with mom's life, but for me, yeah. you got this way on your own. That was a driving force to be a great parent from a negative experience. But mom was the one that kind of instilled those family values. The only thing you agree you could, with that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The only thing that she didn't get is the devotions after dinner. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Some of the worst times. Some of the that biggest was, fights were after devotions. And, how, and now <laughs> do you do devotions. devotions with your children? Do, how do they turn out? We don't believe in devotions. <laughs> <laughs> Probably yeah, think, the same way. The worst time. And, <laughs> and, and there are eight Christmases that I remember on Christmas. Uh, she's going to get ticked off at us again. <laughs> on, on Christmas lunch had this Advent, this family Advent. Yes. And we sat around the table. Like and had normal ad, families. And normal. Had an Advent candle. Right. And we had a reading. And we had yes. to light the candles. That to this day, to this day, we, we never got it. through them because we started <laughs> laughing. And, um, yeah. and you know, I think it started with Matt doing the sound imitations of the sheep around the manger and y'all doing something else and mom storming away from the table. So safety. that's one tradition y'all didn't carry through, <laughs> no. which I'm grateful. But I think, I think it's, for most families, that's a sacred Incredible, wonderful time. Well, yes. For our family, it was it was <laughs> nothing just, sacred. Nothing, nothing was sacred. sacred at all. <laughs> nothing, nothing was sacred. We never we never got through the family devotion. We never wanted you guys or or Steph and or Chris or the kids to say, "Oh, are you kidding? We have to we go have to Nana and Pop's again. house." I don't want. We we've really been very very sensitive to keep that kind of thing to. To create your own traditions, but, but as, the, the door's always open. As everybody's gotten older with holidays and vacations, kind of on that subject, it it has been a lot more tough now that he's got older kids, right. and our net, mine are starting to work at camp now. Right. So, uh, holidays and and vacations certainly has yeah, been. You a mess up our vacation. Your kids mess up our vacation. <laughs> yeah. When does that start? Last you, know. you didn't even know. We've That's done true. we've done three with with everybody. You know, three beach vacations since our retirement, and putting together calendars. It's, it's impossible. impossible. We can't get it. I mean, we did it this year. Well, Dakota couldn't come. We, but it, it's it's it next to impossible because they're growing up and they've got lives and they are in extracurricular activities and they're thriving. So I think we're at the point now. If you can make it if great, you can make yeah. it great. If you can't, we'll miss you. But we're still going to do that and go to Doc's for fried shrimp. You know, I think one of the traditions, and I think you guys still do it, is Saturday barbecue. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think what's been cool <laughs> is that now that our kids are in Dallas with you guys, they're coming over. They're, yep. Like that's still, yeah. that's just been yes. part of their life since they were little. Yep. And now they get to do it with you as well. And it's funny for me, uh, and I can only speak for, I know mom feels the same way, but yes, that's become, and this sounds crazy. It's not, it's almost sacrilegious. That Saturday for me has become a sacred time. Mm. And we keep saying to the kids, now it's Peyton and William and Christian in Dakota, you don't have to come. Don't we? Don't want you to feel like you have to come. But they just enjoy coming, and uh, we're loving that to reparent. And 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 you learn. I think as a grandparent, there are still parental things that you do, but it's not it's not the same yeah. as parenting your own kids. Well, you told me it's not your job to raise my kids. I'm not, you no, no. So you sugar them up. Oh yeah, hype them up. It's not my job to teach your kids right. how to eat, and then they get home and they get spankings, and, they have and no I blame it on you. Well, that's you your can problem. thank Pop for this. I one. remember uh, them saying you would never have allowed us to do that because if they want to eat ice cream, chances are if I'm there, Nan's better at that, more stable. But if they want to eat ice cream with me, we're going to have ice cream. Your job is teach them to eat broccoli and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. I remember uh, you you saying you would never have allowed us to do that, and we both say very freak frequently we like them better than we like yeah. you guys we like them a lot yeah. better so they also listen better yeah yeah they do more better things for us don't yeah, they? They do. yeah and then you guys come home and it just all breaks loose and like what what happened with them so 
But it's good. And, and the gift of, of watching you guys and the gift of watching your children, our six unbelievable grandchildren that are all different. I mean, all of those kids are absolutely as different as they can be. And then watching Peyton's husband, Dakota, come in. You know, we we never had girls. I couldn't have done girls. And when to, and when Peyton got married and asked me to do her wedding, that was a tough thing to see a father of a bride. I don't know how you did it, but man, and Jeremy, that's going to be coming in 30 years when Morgan gets married. But and what's funny is grandparenting, all six of them, different care, oh, different as day is night, how we, how we relate to them. Yeah. All it's, six it's, of them are so different So from parenting the three of you all differently, it's gone right back into the same mode as, as grandparenting. And I got to tell you, I, thanking God that I had boys, I just, you know, your girls, I, I, I couldn't have done, I, I could not have done girls. Who's your favorite grandchild? Well, now would be a, now would be a time to say, you really were a girl, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> we could handle you. And, you know, I tell, it's interesting because I told you guys and I tell all six of the grandchildren anytime I see them, you're my favorite. Yeah. Because one day I want them to say when they stand up and eulogize me and I want all six of my grandchildren to eulogize me when I go to heaven, I don't want you guys to know because I think they love me more than you love me. <laughs> they will be able to say I was his favorite because he told me. Christian got ordained so he could do something. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you remember See, that. See, they're Online. all different. That's the thing. They're just all so different.